Thank you very much for coming this evening. We appreciate seeing everyone at the gallery. And I am very privileged to introduce our artist for the evening. Angelica Pozo comes to us from Cleveland, Ohio. She is a full-time artist, an educator, and an author. Um, Angelica has her Master of Fine Arts and Ceramics from the University of Michigan, a Bachelor of Fine Arts and Ceramics from New York State College of Ceramics, Alfred University, and also a degree from Moore College of Art in Philadelphia. And she is going to talk to us a little bit about not only the show tonight, but her art in general. Okay, thank you. Well, it's always a great opportunity to be able to have a solo show and to really kind of focus on a particular idea and a particular concept. But to just sort of give you a little bit of background of how, what came before this particular show, um, I am, as um, was said, I'm a full-time self-employed artist, and I just saw someone I recognize in the back there. <laughs> and I, um, I do, um, I do a lot of public art and um, tile work. We're in big, giant projects, and I also work in schools and I do residencies in schools and as a teaching artist. And so sometimes I, I, I work on big projects, and the themes of those object, uh, those projects are either related to the site, um, like I did a project at the Cleveland Airport, the International Airport, at the RTA station, and that has to do with the history of aviation. Totally different than plants and flowers. Um, I've done a piece at the um, Law Library at Cleveland State University, and that has to do with law statutes and totally different plants. But um, so those are related to those particular sites. But when get left to my own resources and, and I'm to my own interests, plants and flowers and landscape and the environment are my um, you know things that I love and the things that I am interested in. And um, sometimes I'll do sculptural pieces that are in those um, you know related to those themes. And um, and sometimes I'll uh, do some other tiles that are you know other you know uh, images of other types of flowers, either sculpted or painted. But I found that through the years, I, I every time I'll do I'll, sometimes I'll do workshops. I'll 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 do a, 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 an orchid here and an orchid there. And so when it came time to to figure out a theme for this particular show, I said, well, let me just sort of like. Go with you know, stick my elbows all the way into it instead of just doing one time here and there, and do a whole show of, of, of orchids. And um, so, thusly, I came up with um, this particular show. I also used to do drawing a lot. I started out um, in my ceramics um, in art school. I started as a painting major at first, and then the painting department was just doing some black, um, still lifes, and I was kind of bored with that. And, took my first play class and fell in love with that. And so now I kind of have a marriage of the two different mediums as far as a lot of my work is very um, painterly or, or, or uses a lot of my skills from painting and, and now I have also the relief adds another dimension. So um, so that I, um, you know, I, I, I decided to, you know, to go back and do some more drawings again, which were, came later than, you know, after the, I had done all the ceramics first. That are in this show, um, but I, I enjoyed being able to kind of like visit, revisit um, pastel drawings and use them in a different way than I had done before, and to really study orchids. Orchids are are very unique. They're um, a lot of flowers are you know they have they're alluring. They're they're alluring because they're trying to allure insects to them to be able to replicate, you know, um, you know reproduce and. Um, and to you know, uh, extend their existence and all that, but um, but they're also the way they are. They're alluring to our eyes and to our noses, and and um, and most flowers are you know cent you know centered, you know have a center, and are, and so that you see exactly where your eyes are supposed to go to, and, and you know to that center, and that's where the the, the, the insect is supposed to go to. It, but orchids are so compl complex. They have all these different um, parts and chambers, and they're 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 asymmetrical, and, and they're just very fascinating. And um, trying to depict them in a relief form, and trying to understand what's happening in them, and, and has been very exciting for me to kind of sort of study that. And and, um, and so that it, the first ones that I started doing, I think the, of these, except for some of the smaller ones, which are from past little projects here and there. The first large one is this one over here to the right of the, the um, lettering. And when I was
was done with that, I, I, that one I, like, I carefully, I sm very smoothly um, sculpted it, and, and, and when it came time to glaze it, I just decided to leave it terracotta, because I, I really liked the um, contrast of, of this image that was supposed to be you know, very soft petals and something that's very delicate to just be left in this um, just straight um, clay surface, kind of brick-like surface. And so I, I like that contrast. I do like contrast. And then, um, then, I, then I, so I did that for a show in Chicago, um, came back with this in here, and then I did the, the other ones. And so I did some of the other ones that, that I also left smooth. But then I started um, this new way of glazing, um, combining the color and the copper. So the ones that are actually are glazed um, have a little bit extra, um, heavier texture and there's a copper. So actually it's like the ones that are over here with the black background, with the black stain. It's, it's that, that same base. I decided to put a white glaze over them and then use that as a surface to paint the colors in. So kind of like taking, you know, just sort of taking it a step further and, um, and starting to put some color in it. So I, I like the, the combination of, of the, some of them that are where you're just looking at them in their pure essence and just looking at the form and just looking at the, um, you know, the, the, the clay depicting that form, which usually your eye is allured by their color and their, and their boldness, but just looking at the, at the form, which it in itself is very alluring. And then I also um, then like the working with the color, so um, the color ones as well. So I, I like, I like both, both um, renditions. I, I don't know if I was, you know, which one I would say, I can't say which ones I like the best. I think I like, I would continue to do both in, in both different um, techniques. But, um, but it's basically, this has been like a, uh, for this particular show, it's, it's kind of uh, following an obsession that I had with these, um, these uh, orchids and, and um, decided just to do a whole show of them, and that will probably lead to doing um, some more, some more orchids. Another, another um, family of flowers uh, is, um, or plants, are cactus, which are, that I would like to do in the future, which is very opposite of, almost opposite of um, orchids, but um, the orchids are, I think are, I just, uh, it's been a fascination that I finally decided to, an itch that I decided to scratch <laughs> for this particular show. Um, what else to say? The, the titles are the actual um, names of the orchids. There's there's something like thirty or forty five thousand different species of orchids. There's like that. So I have I could I could keep doing orchids for a really long time if I, if I decided. But um, I, um, some other series of sculptures that I've done in the past, I start I made fake botanic names for these sculptural pieces, which were you know, just sort of um, you know, sculptures that are um, not after, you know, they're completely invented um, flowers of mine. But um, looking at the names that they have for the orchids are, it, it, it's, I think it's interesting and fascinating. There, there are so many people that are, you know, it's a big group of people that are uh, obsessed with orchids and are orchid enthusiasts, and so, um, it's just uh, I can understand why they are. They uh, they're fascinating flowers. So. Any questions for Angelica? Yes. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you can talk a little bit more about your process. Do you work directly from the flowers? Do you draw them or photograph them? Or how do you go from the flower to to, to the title? Yeah. I have uh, I have two really good orchid books. <laughs> And um, that have uh, for photographic books. Uh, I mean, a, a photographic book of orchids, and that um, has a little bit of history about them. And then every single um, species or or subspecies, or you know, what they're exactly called. But there's there's a family of, of orchids, so they have it divided by the family of orchids. So this one's the Phalaenopsis, and that's that that's the family. And then the rest of the name is the Lena her hers. And, um, and they, each one in this one is pop, papio pendulum because it has a pendulum kind of shape. And um, so, so each family then, the sort of papio, papio pendulum, would have several different flowers within that um, family. So that, that's the way the, the book is organized. So I started to kind of learn about the different types of species and, and, um, and uh, or subspecies or fam families of 
of um, family of orchids and the, and then the hybrids and some of them are hybrids and um, and they have several names. They have like a Latin name. Some of them have like three different names. And they have the Latin name and then they have another common name and yet another common name and, and then some of them are from different societies of orchid. You know, I guess, you know the FCC slash EOS and the whatever. I don't know what they all means, but they have their little initials behind them that that places them within a family of, um, or a specific um, group of people who have designated, because people will then try to hybrid them and, or discover certain ones and then they get a name. And, you know, so um, so I, I have those books and I, I um, look at those and um, pick up a, uh, a flower and, and that's part of trying to decipher what the shape is because I'm looking at this flat image of this flower that I have not seen in life. And I'm trying to figure out what is all that that's going on in there? Is this thing forward? Is it? And then actually I found one piece that I'd done earlier, and actually that one that's on the end over here, where then later on I redid that flower and I realized something that I thought came forward is actually a shadow, or actually not a shadow, but came in on a real form. So it, it, it's been interesting to, to um, kind of really look at the, those forms, and that's why looking at the similar family from a different angle, then I was, oh no, no, that part comes forward. So, um, so that's uh, in the book I've been looking at. But I would like to, and I almost got the opportunity to go to um, the house of a um, orchid breeder and see their whole, but I lost that connection, but if that would have been not very good. And so someday, hopefully, I, I can actually go someplace and take pictures and be able to take pictures from different angles, but I'm starting to kind of understand them a little bit better from, from actually doing a whole show and sitting and doing one after one, the other, and one after the other, and realizing, oh no, this, is, this part comes out this much, and that part's over here, and that part's way deep in there, you know, just sort of kind of, sort of visually trying to feel what's going on. And so doing, having done the reliefs first, and trying to decipher them, really was a big help than when I went to do the, the drawings because then I already started to understand the, the depth that was in the flowers, which is, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in those <laughs> flowers. Any other questions? Yes. One question. Mm -hmm. On the pastels, you seem to consistent, consistently use a, like a black background, mm -hmm. and on the glaze ones, it, it's a different Mm -hmm. So why those choices? Well, the, um, the, the ones that are in pastel, I am uh, drawing mostly from, um, I mean, I'm drawing directly from the book and I'm trying to match what's in the, in the book. And a lot of them are photographed on a black background, not all of them, but I find that that really makes them pop. As far as, and then the color that you have in the pastels, they're more true to color, and, and I'm really working with the color. When I'm working with these, I'm working with the color. And um, you know, as, as well as the form of the depth, but I'm, you know, I, I want to make that color and that form really pop out. And then, um, and then actually, and then the ones that are just all terracotta, I, I, um, or or even with the terracotta gelato, which is that gives a little bit of sheen, but still has that terracotta color. Um, I wanted the form and just the shadow. I was trying just to sort of subdue the the. The color and then if since those ones that have that green background is actually the ones that have the black just like that one with the black it's the same if it's a, a copper oxide it's um, copper carbonate actually and it's a copper it's a natural um, uh, chemical that a coloring chemical and you just make a wash of it and so that when you just fire it uh, in the clay it becomes metallic and black but when you put a glaze over it it turns green some black comes through, so that's why the backgrounds are clean. But but those, um, I I let some of it go into the forms a little bit so that the the, the foreground, the form would, would um, relate to a little bit of the background. So I let a little bit, but then uh, I did the color. I you know I did the worked on the uh, did it in the Mayolica style. Mayolica is um, you know, work right on the raw white glaze and paint the stains on top of them. So um, so I. I I kind of like let some of that green come through the mialka that I put on top. So I, they look pretty close to what the, the flower was, but I knew that these are going to be much more like really 
by trying to uh, reproduce you know, exactly what the flower looks like, whereas those, I'm letting the ceramic give it a little bit more personality, or a different kind, different kind of personality than, than these. Any other questions? Well, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. We have a little token of appreciation Aww. for you. Oh, well, thank, for thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you have any further questions, of course, she's here. She's so here. You can ask me individually if you do. Thank you for showing us.